Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 8-Ball Sports. And probably the most exciting game of the opening week just got done with literally like a minute, two minutes ago. It got finished about 6.20 Central Time, and it's 6.22 uh, Central Time now. Just ran down from the TV I was watching it on to make this video because that was that was a great game. Um, before, I'm sure there's going to be some Penn State fans uh, that, that watch this video. Before anyone comments anything like Ohio State sucks, something like that. Uh, I love college football. I say this in almost every video, so if, if you are a subscriber, you've, you've heard it before, but I love college football, and when I'm not doing an Ohio State uh, post-game analysis, I keep it as unbiased as possible. Um, now, obviously, you know, with this Ohio State video, I'm going to be a little bit biased because I am an Ohio State fan, but Penn State, Appalachian State, you know, I have to give respect where respect's due. If, if Michigan goes out there and, and kills Notre Dame tonight, I'm going to say, you know, good job, Michigan. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep it unbiased simply because I'm an Ohio State fan. So let's talk about the game that just got done with a final score of 45 to 38. Penn State survives uh, Appalachian State in overtime. Now it was a fantastic game. I was watching the Auburn Washington game, which was a really really good game. There'll be a post game analysis video for that out. I'll probably record that right after this because that game actually finished before this game. But obviously I wanted to see the end of um, the Penn State game. Uh, but I was watching that game, and that was you know a great game, but the defensive, defensive battle game, really not much scoring. You know, I think there's only one touchdown, two touchdowns scored. I think the entire game. I didn't see the second one, um, or I guess Auburn could have gotten two more field goals. I I, I have to look at it um, before I make that video and see. But I flipped over from it when it was 15-16 Washington with the lead, um, and I flipped over to the Appalachian State Penn State when it was 31-24. I had seen that it was Appalachian State was up 10-7. It was 10-10 at halftime. I looked over again, and it was 24-10 Penn State. And I said, okay, Penn State's pulling away in the second half. I think what most people kind of expected. But then uh, I flip over because I see the score now is 31-24. You know, Appalachian State scored a little bit here. Penn State still has a seven-point lead. I flip over. Appalachian State had just scored that touchdown to make it a seven-point game. They were kicking off, and they onside kick and a beautiful onside kick recover it, go down and score, and tie the game up at 31. And that was, whew, sorry about that, computer just came on behind me. Um, but that was exciting. That was um, that was quite the onside kick, just a sequence of events, the onside kick and then the score to tie the game. Then I flipped back over to the uh, Washington-Auburn game, watched a little bit of it, flipped back over, and all of a sudden Appalachian State had the ball back with a chance to go down and score, and that's exactly what they do. They go down. Well, actually, when I flipped over, they got the ball. They punted it, a beautiful punt that pinned Penn State, like, right inside the five. Penn State went three and out, punted it back to Appalachian State, who then drove, like, 40 yards for the score. Took the 38-31 lead, lead, but they left too much time on the clock, and that's where I think if you look back at it, if you're the head coach there, you know, you love the touchdown, but you could have ran out of the clock a lot and maybe kicked a field goal, could have ran out the clock and then scored a touchdown with under a minute left and probably at making Penn State use all their timeouts. Um, but obviously a field goal is never guaranteed. If you see the touchdown, I think as, as any player would, you go for that touchdown. Not really thinking about if I drop down here and we can make them use their timeouts and then our kicker just has to kick the game winner. But score a touchdown. So now all your defense has a minute 45 to stop Penn State. A kickoff, the Penn State returner hesitates. Um, apparently he'd been doing it all game. That's what the announcer was saying. I obviously had not watched the entire game. Um, I just kind of watched bits of the first half and then this, this fourth quarter here. And I guess he had been doing it all game, but he actually takes it out. He has a great return. I think it was like a 52, 53 yard return. Penn State goes down. Trace McSorley with a fantastic throw um, to tie up the game. I mean, there were like unblocked blitzers from each side for Appalachian State coming to crush them. And he just kind of dropped back and lobbed one to the same guy who had returned the kick. Made the catch. Extra points good. They tied the game up. Appalachian State drives down a little bit. That's where I honestly thought Penn State was going to lose that game. After Appalachian State's first play um, of that, like, they had 40 seconds to try to go down the score. Because they got, like, past the 50. And I was like, okay, Appalachian State, all you have to do now is just, you know, get to the 25, 30-yard line and, and kick a field goal. So they get down, and it ends up being a 56-yard try, and I think the kicker had the leg for it, but it was the way right. It wasn't even close. Um, I mean, you could tell off his foot it wasn't going to go in. So we're headed to overtime. Appalachian State wins the wins the coin toss. 
They choose to de play defense. Penn State runs the ball four straight times, um, and on that fourth time, their running back, Miles something. Uh, sorry, I don't have the stats or anything pulled up. This is right after the game finished. Uh, Miles something, whatever his last name is, ran into the end zone um, for the score, 45-38. Appalachian State uh, goes three plays. They're facing a fourth and like... Uh, fourth and it won, and it was close. They give them the first down, they review it, and it stands. And I thought that was the right call. Um, I think if they had called it short, it probably would have stood there too. But it did look like maybe that the tip of the ball was touching the 15-yard line, which would have been the first down um, because they started the 25. So, And then the announcer said, you know, this would be a good time to take a shot. And in my opinion, when, literally when they said that, I thought, Why? Appalachian State is the underdog, a huge underdog, and as the underdog, you cannot hurt yourself. Taking a shot, especially in this type of situation, is a has a much higher risk of a turnover. You know, go like a, get a decent gain on first, get a decent gain on second, set yourself up for a third down, and if you don't get on third, you can try again on fourth like you just had. You're trying to score, you're trying to extend this game, and then if you do end up scoring a touchdown, maybe you go for two, you, you go for it all then. Uh, but you at least have to score the touchdown first. Don't go for it all now. The announcer said they should take a shot. They took a shot, um, and I I disagreed with it. And Penn State uh, defender made a really nice interception over um, the defensive back. Sorry, I just got a uh, alert that's talking about baseball. So anyway, a great interception, and uh, the Penn State fans you know go crazy. Penn State escapes the game with a victory. Now. What this means for both teams, I do this in most of my analysis. Is uh, I don't know, I don't know the plural of analysis. I really need to learn that. I do this in most of my um, post game analysis. Um, for Penn State, gotta work on the defense. Twenty eight points in the fourth quarter, and thirty eight points to an Appalachian State team is not exactly what you would want. I mean, you give up almost three hundred passing yards to a guy who hadn't thrown. Who hadn't started a game at quarterback since like his senior year in high school in 2015, I believe is what the announcer said. I'm not bashing on Penn State or anything. They got the win. That's that's all you had to do here week one. Get the win, move on to the next game, find a way to win that one. They found a way to win this game. Um, closer than a lot of people I think would have liked for it to be. But they've got the win. But the offense, I, I even though they lost Barkley, their, their new running back seems like he will be a, a one of the top running backs in the Big Ten. And Trace McSorley is a Heisman candidate, um, and he made that he made a Heisman type play with that throw and leading him down the field uh, with with just under two minutes left to go to try to tie up that game. So he showed, you know, he he can work through the adversity. So uh, great great job by him. The offense I'm not worried about for Penn State. The defense kind of worries me. Kind of similar to uh, my Buckeyes uh, from their first game today. The defense worried me a little bit, but the offense, I mean, we put up 77 on Oregon State. Obviously, you know, it's not exactly parallel. I think Appalachian State's probably better than Oregon State in my eyes. Um, but, yeah, also Penn State fans, remember, Appalachian State's no longer an FCS school. You know, when they beat Michigan, they were a team uh, coming out. You know, they weren't going to do anything. They were not. They were in the FCS. Now they're in the FBS. I believe they're in, like, the American Conference maybe or – one of those other tinier conferences, but you know they are an FBS team. They're not a pa they're not a Power Five team, but they're a solid football team. So taking them lightly, you know, they're they're a good team. For Appalachian State, I really don't know much about you know I, I don't even know what division they're in, so I can't really say much about that, about that. But it looks like they're going to have another great season. They've had a history in their program of having really really good seasons. Of course, uh, eleven years ago to the date when they beat Michigan. And then they had, I know they had a good year, I think their first year in the FBS when they won their division, whatever that is, and made it to a bowl game. They're a solid football program, and this was a really good first game. Uh, almost pulled off another amazing upset. Not quite, but I see them definitely making another bowl game and definitely making a push to win their conference. So we'll see if they can do that. So if you're an Appalachian State fan, um, I guess, you know, you have a lot to look forward to, I guess. If you're a Penn State fan, again, for me, I'm a little bit worried about the defense. They need to perform better next week. I don't know who they play. But like again, face when they face Ohio State, they're going to have to play better than what they did today. Um, but for Penn State's offense, no worries there. McSorley uh, is looking like quite the quarterback. And uh, we'll see if Penn State can do. So leave your opinion down in the comment section below. Um, 
did you know what did you think of this game? This was, in my opinion, the most exciting game of week one in the 2018 college football season. What has been the most exciting game to you? Now, obviously, we still have plenty of games left tonight, but so far, I think this is the most exciting game. In the comment section down below, tell me if you agree, and if you don't, uh, then tell me which game you thought was the most exciting. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more post-game analysis. I do this, uh, you know, five, six games uh, out of the 2018, uh, out of the week, hopefully every week. Um, you know, the big time matchups or like this and almost upset or if there is a huge upset. And then, of course, I do my Ohio State uh, postgame analysis. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, and then be sure to leave a like on the video. Um, it really would mean a lot. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up button and uh, I'll see you guys later.